The Pop Flash Podcast, Pop Flash Podcast, Pop Flash Podcast! Boom! Uh, that was my intro. <laughs> I'm still not over the fact that I have my own intro. That's such a that's such a thing. I, I I live my whole life, you know, and I never had an introduction song, and now I do. Thank you so much, Derek, from the big time. Every podcast episode, I'm going to give Derek a shout out because I I have my own intro song. I mean, listen to this shit. Listen to this shit. Wow. It's just like that shit gets me so that gets me hype. I hope it gets you I, I hope it gets you going. I hope it gets you excited for the episode. Because on this episode I have an interview with Miss Katie Groves. Somebody that I've been a fan of for a little bit of time, probably about what, four years now? She was one of the first interviews we did on Pup Fresh. And I don't know. Ever since then, she's kind of been a part of Pup Fresh uh culture. I always would play where the shit um, on my way up to interview bands at shows, and that's actually a story I share with her in the interview. Uh, but before we get to the interview, why not talk about what's going on in the music world, right? Huh? Because you want to hear my opinions on that stuff, right? Yeah, you totally do. Okay. <sighs> so to start off, let's talk about this century. Hmm? Hmm? They're breaking up. Oh, that's a bummer, right? I don't know. I was never a fan of this century. They've always been good at the site, always were available to do press. So for that reason, I am bummed out. But I was never into them. I don't know. And for whatever reason, I would always associate them with being like the opening band for the main. Even though they haven't done that many tours together, it just seems like for for a minute there, every time the main was going on tour, it's like, with special guests, this century, Austin Gibbs, a rocket to the moon. And that's cool. I like it's cool that friends tour together. Um, it just gets kind of like you see the same thing over, and it's just like eh, I don't know. But I, I feel for this century's like fan base. That's that's a bummer. Um, it's a shame that they never really took off or whatever. Because I don't know, they have fans. They're good, right? I, um, <laughs> that's the, I'm not. I don't sound compassionate at all. But I know what it's like to have like one of your favorite bands break up, and I know that. A lot of people love that band, so I'm sorry, fan base, and uh, I don't know. I don't have any opinions. Sorry about that. Let's see. What, what else we got? Oh, cool. So how about 21 Pilots, huh? Yeah. Did you see that? They're they're going to have the number one album. I bet you didn't see that coming. I didn't see it coming. Who would have thought? 21 Pilots. These dudes, when they sent a feel by ramen, I was like, who the fuck are these guys? And I didn't get into Vessel, and then... I saw them live a bunch of times, and I was, like, blown away, and I'm like, how come I never got into this band? What's wrong with me? And then Blurry Face is unbelievable. Like, I think this is going to be my album of the year. Um, like, what else is coming out? I, what, what, what do I have to look forward to? Or, wait, All Time Low had an album out, and that's probably what everybody's album of the year is going to be. But Blurry Face is the fucking best shit I've heard in a minute. So they that's well-deserved, and that's crazy. Those dudes are, like, taken off in the way that they are because – I honestly, I don't think a lot of people would have expected that, but they are different, and they're doing something that nobody else is doing, and it's just, it's, it's great. It's, it's a really good thing. I, you know, congratulations to them. I'm sure everybody agrees that they deserve it. Okay, we got tours coming up now. Why not talk about tours? I should talk about tours, shouldn't I? Especially since a bunch got announced this week. I'll just talk about the important ones though. Like, I'm not going to talk about your fucking local bands going out on tour. I'll talk about. Like, Against the Current, uh, whoa, Against the Current, that's how you say it. They announced a world tour. That's pretty big, right? That's pretty big. They announced, they announced a world tour. A band from YouTube is signed to Feel by Ramen just announced a world tour. That's great. That's cool. I personally don't like when tours are announced, like, a half a year in advance. It's just, it. it's like, because, like, right now is the time that I'd be excited is when it gets announced. And then, like, you get the tickets, and then you just wait, and then, like... I don't know. What if something happens between now and then? Like, what if you don't like them by then? I don't know. That's a stupid thought because I doubt that ever happens. But I just don't like wait. I guess I'm an impatient person. I don't want to sit around and wait for when October they're hitting the states. It's fucking May right now, dog. Like, it's May and they announce a tour that they're doing. But it's still huge. That's crazy that they're they're about to blow. They're about to blow up. I mean, just look at them. I mean, so much potential there, and they're feel by ramen. Um, Newfound glory. Yellow card, Tiger's Jaw. That's a tour. That's that's a 
hey man, if it's 2006, you bet your ass that this thing's about to hit every arena near you. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I'm a, I'm a fan of New Found Glory and Yellow Card. Not quite Tiger Shaw. Never got into them, but I hear they're good. I and mean, that's an exciting tour, isn't it? I don't know. If, I don't know if that tour lends itself to like the listeners of this podcast, but why the hell not? And then, of course, the State Champs Tour, which they talked about on the last podcast, which is actually, I was mad about that. They're like, all right, we're not, we're going to announce it on Monday, so you can post the podcast on Monday. And they talked about it in the interview. And then, what was it, Wednesday? Wednesday. Oh, man. So I had to wait to post the podcast, but that's, that's no big deal. I don't give a shit. And then, what else is in the headlines? Ooh, Mayday Parade finished their new album. That's cool. Yeah, they they finished their new album. I was I was trying to pretend to be an excited fan on Twitter just to get like the retweets, you know. It's like just kind of that's what I do that. I'm so dishonest on there sometimes. So <laughs> I probably shouldn't admit that to you guys, but no, that's cool. I think that I I'd be a lot more excited if I knew for a fact that, like Jason Lancaster was going to be on this album. Wouldn't that be cool? Like shit. Imagine that them going back to there. That'd be crazy. But yeah, I I don't know. I I don't really. I uh, Mayday Parade's cool. I know that everybody. I I should just pretend to love them so that you guys listen to my podcast. But I, I love their their one album, A Lesson in Romantic. Such a good. That's such a good record. And that's why I'm one of the. I'm the. Well, if Jason comes back, then I'll like Mayday Parade type of Mayday Parade fans. That's me. So you can <laughs> you can pelt things at me if you'd like, but. Um, and then, of course, I thought that I'd save um, probably one of the bigger stories for last is that uh, Austin from Set It Off um, is, turns out he's doing fucked up things with fans, which apparently I need to be careful with how I report that or else I may not come across as a um, good journalist. <laughs> you guys read it. I'm assuming that you read about Austin Kerr from Set It Off. And I, I do want to talk about that for a minute. And um God, this shit, this shit hit me. This is like the first time a story like this is like felt personal to me, because that dude, and set it off. At one point, they stayed at my. I was living in a townhouse with a couple of friends. And they stayed, they stayed there with us. Them and Divided by Friday did, and I talked to Austin for like a long ass time when they stayed there, and he was like teaching me about how to get a good reach on Facebook and like showing me like different fonts and saying dude you need to change the font on puff fresh to be more bubbly you need to you know do this and this and this and like we really had a good conversation and like i really took a lot of his advice to heart he seemed to know how to like do the social media thing and it was fucking great and the guy seemed like cool and all that and then now he's asking like fucking well he's just asking underages for to have threesomes and doing butt stuff he's like i'm drunk let's do butt stuff I don't know, you get some, somebody on Tumblr shared their story, and a lot of people are coming forward now, and it's one of those things where it's like, fuck, man, like, I thought, like, it's, okay, let me, let me put it this way, it's, I, I'm very, very glad that people are coming out with these stories, and it's, it's a great thing that people have the courage to come out with them, I'm not glad that the things that are happening are happening, though, and that's where it's kind of like, I'm, I'm just sick of hearing about these band dudes, and, and you gotta think of how much more this happens than what is just being reported, and I was actually talking to one of my buddies who's in the music biz, in the industry, he could be in a band, he could not be in a band, he could be somebody that, I don't know, well no, he's in a band, I'm not gonna reveal his identity, because that shit doesn't matter, but he was talking to me, and he's like, yo, I'm kind of worried myself, like, it seems like all these stories are coming out, and what if it becomes such a common thing, to where people, like, start lying, just because they hate a band member, and I talked to him, I'm like, dude, that's a fucked up way to think, because, like, if you, if you haven't done anything, then, first of all, you're probably gonna be fine, I doubt you have that many enemies, but, like, why would you assume that people are going to lie like that, especially considering, like, the statistics that prove that people don't lie about sex crimes? It's, like, I think 2 to 8%, closer to 2%, actually do lie about any kind of sex crime. And almost everybody that is, like, committing the sex crime, they always lie about committing it. So it's it's one of those things where it's like, dude, you got to realize that, like, this shit is real, and I don't think anybody's out to get anybody, that's not like a mentality that people necessarily have, 2% of people do that, like, what, like, what the fuck are you, like, worried about, and he's like, yo, I'm just worried, because I want to, like, have this 
good image to people like i i don't wanna, and i'm like dude just don't do anything fucking stupid i'm telling you this is my friend and it's somebody that if you were to do something stupid i would be so quick to fucking out you and tar you and feather you because you know i i, I you know th- that kind of thing would break a friendship with me and obviously because obvious reasons but yeah this this austin from set it off thing it's, it's weird because like all the times like I would go off on Twitter and go on these rants about people and like, yo, this is fucked up, fuck this person, blah, blah, blah. But this is somebody that like, I know. And we were close to set it off in the past. So when I did this, I, I mean, I, it just felt kind of weird. It, it, and I'm not going to hold anything back because like the guy was friendly to me, but like it still felt, it, it was, it's weird when it hits this close to home. I had somebody on Twitter, they're like, are you just going to jump to every conclusion that you see? based off someone's tumblr you know that people could easily fake screen caps and do this and this and this and it's like i don't think the band would have like kicked him out if this was somebody faking it either because set it off to kick him out which is you know the best thing that they could have done and then somebody's like oh what you don't think that they would kick him out just to save face and i'm like what the fuck do you mean kick him off to save face like if you understand how close that band was together and i know because i saw them when they stayed the night at my in my townhouse like they were the fucking closest tight-knit group of guys that I have ever seen. It seemed like they were all each other's best friend, and there's just so much love between each one of the members. I don't think that they would say, all right, dude, fuck you. Get, you're out of here because we need to remain. We need to keep our image. I think that, I mean, they had to have known this shit was happening, which also makes me think, yo, if you knew this shit was happening, why didn't you kick him out a long time ago? It's like, you just wait until he gets caught. You know, you kind of, you can't just act like you didn't fucking know about this. So there's a lot of dynamics to the Austin Kerr thing. I feel like I was just talking about Austin Jones. It's like Austin and Austin. It's like, you can't trust anybody named Austin, apparently. It's, (laughs) I made a tweet. It's like, DTA, don't trust anyone, aka don't trust Austin which is a knockoff of an old uh, thing that happened in wrestling, if you guys want to go back to the early 2000s. I don't know. I, I really I hate talking about this kind of stuff because it, it really, really bothers me that there are so many people out there getting hurt and being manipulated by band members. And then there's so many other things that I'm sure that we don't know about, and I know that there are probably going to be so many more stories that come out. And it's just it's unfortunate that anybody had to go through with any of that. And so to all of the victims, I, I want to you know send all of my know, apologies, whatever, sympathy. I, I feel terrible for you, and I really do, and it's a, it's a shame. Um, Austin Kerr, you're a fuck, and you sh- shouldn't take advantage of your fans, especially when Set It Off has this. You know that Set It Off has this whole fucking dynamic where they're like, oh, yeah, positivity, ch- chase your dreams, do this and this and this, which is great. It's fucking awesome. And I truly believe that Cody believes in all of that stuff that he's preaching. But then it comes out that one of their members is, you know, taking advantage of fans. Like, come on. Like, that's, uh So maybe they are saving face. I don't know. It's weird. I doubt that they are. But, you know, I see why a fan hit me up. And so then I go on Twitter and I, I fucking, I, I, I report it the way that I do and which you all know is very sarcastic and not that I'm trying to like make the situation seem unimportant and make jokes about it. I just, I really am like a fucking, I piss at this dude and kind of just want to lay it all out there and my insults or whatever, they come and it happens. I'm a person, I have emotions and this is like my reaction to when I hear about somebody doing that. And then I get all these tweets like, hey, you need to be like a real reporter. What's wrong with you? And, you know, I thought a lot about that this week. I really did, about how we report our stories and how we need to be more um, neutral and unbiased and, you know, have to take an objective approach and just report it as is. But that kind of shit, like, I thought about it, and I don't think that I'm ever going to be capable of doing that. And, you know, I've never had journalism training. I've never gone through any of that. But And and so maybe that's the reason that I have this mindset. But I feel as though if I'm going to sit there and hear about these things happening and I don't insert my opinion what the fuck kind of person does that make me honestly what kind of person does that make me if I'm sitting there and I hear that um, multiple people are coming forward with these stories am I to just say yo this is what's happening why the fuck can't I have an opinion about that why can't I use my website as my platform to share that opinion you know, you have all of these reporters that, that say that these things happen. Why can't you go out and say, yo, this is really fucked up. This person's a, an asshole. This person fucking sucks. Like, I, I hate this person a lot. Why can't I feel that way? Because when you're a reporter, it doesn't mean that you stop being a person. And they're like, and then there's, you know, the argument, well, then use your personal Twitter to, you know, air these feelings or whatever. 
fuck that. I, you know, nobody's paying attention to my personal Twitter. Who am I going to influence on there? I want to influence people and let everybody know how fucked up this is. Because I don't think my opinion about this dude is wrong. I don't think my opinion about Austin Jones was wrong. I don't think any of this is wrong. Honestly, it bothers me that I'm supposed to be this this thing. That I'm supposed to be this unbiased fucking music blogger. Fuck you. I'm on Tumblr for God's fucking sakes. Are you kidding me? I should be able to express my opinion as many ways as I want to. Yeah, especially when it comes to this, something that's personal to me. Yeah, I have an opinion. This guy's fucking dickwad. He should fucking doesn't deserve any of the success that he's ever had. If, if you know, so that that's where I'm at with it. I'm not gonna, you know, eh. I've been talking for a minute now. I have Katie Groves on the show coming up. I know y'all are excited about that. I hope you're excited about it at least. Um, you know, hey, why why wouldn't you be? She's she's a great person, a great person to talk to. She's all about um, sending a positive message to her fans. Her new single, Crying Game, is unbelievable. It's on Spotify. I don't think it's on iTunes yet, um, but keep an eye out because that's definitely a song that you want to check out. Uh, it's called Crying Game again. And um, we kind of get into it. We talk about um, her old label, the situations that happened there, how she was trying to be somebody that she's not, and how, um, you know, she she lost her brothers and how that affected her. Um, a whole bunch of stuff. It was a good conversation, and I'm, I'm glad that I got to talk to her. Um, again, I'm a big fan of hers. Um, yeah, maybe I should just start the interview now, huh? I never know when to, to go into it. Um, and, and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to listen to this and I'm going to say, shit, I wish I would have added this about this specific thing. Because I know I didn't nearly, I didn't talk about Austin Kerr as much as I, as I should have. But, um, like, he, he came out with the statement. Oh, it was so bad. It was so bad. Follow, follow Pup Fresh on Twitter. You'll get more of that. Um, I don't want to eat up any more of your time. So, without further ado, here is the Pup Fresh podcast number four interview with Katie Groves. Woo! Hello. Hey, Katie, what's up? It's Dan from Puff Rush. How you doing? Hey, how are you? I'm good. You ready to do this podcast? I'm so ready. That was I a did che- so many push-ups. <laughs> that was the cheesiest intro that I've ever done. The uh, the fake. I know. The fake. That was the cheesiest the- thing. I- Right. Yeah. It was a fake surprise call. Like, you ready to do this? We we, we plan that really, out. Really? Like, when I answer my phone, I'm never like, hello? Hey. I'm usually like, what do you want? Oh, my God. Right. When I when somebody calls me, it's usually because I, so, I don't know, I did something to offend them or something. <laughs> you never get a phone yeah. call. Yes. Yeah, so, How are you? I, I'm great. Um, But it's not about me, Katie. We are here right now to talk about your... You're right. It really is all about me. Right. I'm and- glad you realized that. <laughs> Right, we're we're here right now to talk about your new single, "Crying Game," which came out yes. like two weeks ago, something like that. Yeah, two, two or three. Yeah. Katie, can I just tell you that this yes. is by far my favorite song that you've ever recorded? And oh my god, really? Yeah, I like showed it to my mom and everything. It's, is is that weird to? Because I I don't know. I I was like, my mom's always listening to like country. Like she'll come over and be like, Daniel. You need to listen. To, you need to listen to this Miranda Lambert song. And I'm like, mom. Mm-hmm. I'm like, mom. <laughs> I'm, run- I'm running. I'm running. I'm mom. like, mom. I'm running a cool pop punk website. What, what are you showing me this for? But like, I've kind. <laughs> but I kind of like see that you have like a little bit of maybe like a country sort of influence in the new song. Am I am I wrong in that? Well, I I just think that if people ask me that all the time, they're like, why aren't you a country artist? It's like. I'm not any type of artist. I've always just been me. And for a while, I wasn't me. I was trying to be something else. And it was just, it's just like, I grew up in Oklahoma, okay? So it's like, I do have all that Midwest, just white trashiness to me. And I have (laughs) an accent. And I, and my accent is there. And I just like kind of hit it for a few years. And I was trying to do pop music. And I don't, that's not who I am. And so I feel like I just finally wrote a song that was like, listen, I'm not trying to get you with some big Swedish pop song anymore. I'm just going to just write what happened in my life this year. And I'm going to sing it in my natural voice. And this is what's going to happen. And that's what I did. And it's not that I'm trying to be country or trying anything. I'm just being myself finally. And so this song is the truest, version of me that I've ever put out there and the fact that people still accept it really makes me really I mean really happy because 
it's really tough when you show another side of you, you know? Right. And, you know, I was going to kind of make a point later on, but I guess I'll just get into it now, that I kind of have seen almost two sides to you in regards to not only your music, but the way that you'll, you know, one night on Twitter, you'll just go on a rant about pizza and whatever. But then there's also the side of you that you're empowering your fans, you're giving advice, you're, you know, just there for them in this, you know, very genuine, serious way. Um, Yeah. And so... I was just curious as to if you feel as though that translates no, to music. No, I'm actually not bipolar. I <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not going to ask that. No. Don't ask my ex-boyfriend that. <laughs> no, it's just I, I did notice the because you do have the songs like the Where the Shits, you know, which I can I, I jam to at times. I'm not going to lie. Um, mm-hmm. and, but then you also, you know, you come out with Crying Game and I'm just thinking to myself, this seems more her. I and I, I don't know. I, I It came no, across it that way to is. me. It's uh-huh. like for so many years I was on RCA and it wasn't their fault. It was it was me being a confused twenty one year old child who just like wanted to be a superstar. Right. And so I wore the fake hair and I wore the freaking high heels and I wore the fake eyelashes and I played that role for so many years and I was exhausted and so unhappy. Uh-huh. And I was constantly trying to write songs against like the Katy Perry's and the Kesha's and all these people. And like, they're already so big. It's like that waiting pool is so competitive. And then finally I realized like, I'm, this is exhausting. Like, I just want to be myself and I don't care if that gets me huge. Like I have a loyal fan base who wants me to just be me. And so I finally just figured it out. It took me a few years. There are really two sides of me. I mean, I'm still the girl who wrote really shit. I mean, I'm still that girl. Right. You still got that sass, right? All the time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. I'm <laughs> ridiculous. But there's also a really, I mean, you, I, that actually makes me super happy that you can see that to me because I don't know how people see me online. I don't know how they, um, how I come off. Uh-huh. And so I'm glad that you can see that I'm a smart ass, but I also have a heart. Like that makes me happy that you can see that. I think I see that because I I almost see that in myself at times. <laughs> I don't know. I think, yeah. I think that everybody, it, it's something that everybody can relate to because, you know, you are who you are and, you know, you can be funny, but still be sensitive. I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it, it's one of those things. And it definitely, you, you do a good job at, at playing those, those roles and, and being yourself and, Again, which is why I think that the new song is great. But I, then I look back to kind of the Life of a Pirate EP, and I think to that, and that was just you and a guitar pretty much, or a couple of the songs were. Yeah. Even the title track. And, yeah. And, and, and I actually really, I love that shit. Like, I, I really do. And Me too. Like, it, I'm not here to, like, kiss your ass or whatever, but it, it's the truth. And But then I, I think of, like, how much you've grown since then, because while Life of a Pirate is a great song, the title track on the EP, is it's a great song. Um, when, you know, I, I mean, I, what, what was I like a 18, 20 year old dude listening to it, but I was, still yeah. get, I was still getting down to it. But then like crying game is one of those songs that it's like, you know, for an 18 year old, maybe life of a pirate's good, but crying game, I think can go across and, and hit like so many different like demographics. Like that's, that song has the potential, I think, to reach anybody and affect anybody. Like I'm listening to that song. It, it like. 1 a.m. the other day, I even tweeted out that it's like, shit, this shit, this is about to make me cry. Like, what the hell? Like, this is... Wow, thank this is, you. It's unbelievable. And then I think, like, you know, if a, if somebody like Carrie Underwood were to come out with a song like this, you know that that shit would be, like, all over everywhere. Does that, like... Yeah. Does that bother you that, like, you have the talent right there, but, like, you know, like, I think I saw a tweet, somebody's like, you should be on Ellen. And I thought, you, she really should be. Like... Don't you don't you think that <laughs> wow, you, d- doesn't it piss you off that like Carrie Underwood if she were to come out with a song like this it would be like or Taylor Swift even they come out with a song like this it's like you know everybody would be like in awe and and so surprised at how somebody could be so transparent and let somebody into their lives in such a deep way and and here you are doing it kind of just putting yourself out there and you know while you may not have that mainstream success yet you're kind of hoping that it, you get there right well, it is frustrating. I, I wouldn't be telling the truth if I said it wasn't frustrating to feel like I've written like really, really great songs. And I'm not ever one to think I'm better than anyone, but there are a lot of songs on the radio where I listen. I'm like, it, you literally just crap, like 
cracked all over right this song and this is this, this is the worst lyrics i've ever heard in my life and it gets frustrating because it's like but who am i to think that i'm a better writer than anyone you know so and, and that hasn't been you know, proven i mean there's no proof to anyone's writing it's just like you either have a hit or you don't nowadays and so yeah like but but what i feel is that honestly i i don't do this for that reason and i may have for a few years like i was just trying to find a hit find a hit find a hit but that didn't make me happy. I wasn't happy doing music for a few years. And I'm genuinely happy now. I'm like, this song, I want it to be huge. Yeah, I mean, I, anyone would be lying if they said they didn't want success. But the fact that you just told me that it almost made you cry at 1 a.m., like, I've already done my job. Like, to me, it's like, that's success to me. I've already done it. And it's weird because I, I, do, it, I do it for me. And that sounds selfish, but like, I did that song for me. It wasn't for any of y'all. But the fact that it's helping you guys means that, like, couldn't, it, it means that I've exceeded my own expectations, which makes me so happy. So, yeah, I do want it to be huge, and I, I would love if Ellen was like, yo, girl, like, get on my show. But See, this, this, pod, this podcast is just a facade to get you on Ellen. That's what it really is. <laughs> well, God, make it happen. What are you waiting for? Right. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like, like again, like I'm saying again, and and we're talking about this song. It's it's really great. Does it, do you think maybe like like pop artists now they don't like you're talking about the lyrics, and I want to go back to that. How you listen to the radio and you hear, wow, this is literal like shit. Like this is yeah. awful. Like is that? Do you think with are you gonna head into the new direction of just like you're saying you're gonna be you, but is are, is every song gonna be like hard hitting like that last one, or are you just is that? Oh no no no! Was no. that kind of like your My therapy single, song? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that song I wrote with um, one of my really great friends and a, an amazing producer, Josh Grant, and uh, we. I mean, the song was written; it wrote itself in 15 minutes, and then after I wrote it. I just started bawling and I just like walked out of the room and had a panic attack. And then I couldn't do anything. I was in New York to make my album. And it was like, I literally can't write tomorrow. I'm sorry. I'm so depressed now. Like I can't write. Huh. And it just like that song ruined me and I still can't listen to it. And that's so embarrassing to admit, but it's still just like too real for me. I'm just, and I was terrified to put it out to tell you the truth. Cause I was like, okay, so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put it all out there right now. Okay. Uh-huh. This is happening. Um, so, but he really made me comfortable, Josh did. He was just like, listen, this, is, this isn't this is embarrassing. This is your story, and this is cool, because you serve it, like, you're serving, like, reality. And this is what people need, is, like, a real story. And he's like, just tell me about you. Just tell me about it. And so he really got me to make that mature sort of sound and movement into that song. And... Mm-hmm that's what makes a great writing team, I think. And he's so great at producing and capturing exactly what I, what I want. And he just knows me. He just gets it. And so he did this entire new sort of like project. I, I did, he did the entire thing and i just, I couldn't be happier. And, and no, all of them aren't hard hitting at all like that. Um, there's one more hard hitting one, which I'm obsessed with. And I haven't even told anyone the title. Or I haven't even written any, like tweeted any lyrics. Like it's going to be a total surprise. And, it's like, it's, I can't, it's like my favorite song that I've ever written, seriously. Uh-huh. And even more than Crying Game. And then there's two really fun ones. Um, and the next one's a fun one that we're coming out with very soon. So I, um, think, I think you just revealed to us that you have four songs on the way, <laughs> which is, you know, pretty good to hear. Yeah, totally. I have so many more songs on the way. I'm really, really excited. Uh huh. And so in the past, you've kind of, you know, you never really did the album thing. You you kind of have more singles out there than anything I've noticed. Yeah, because um, no one re- would release my shit. <laughs> years. That's not my fault. I had I have seventeen albums if anyone wants them. Right. In my email. Right. So, are you looking for like a more complete release with these next few songs? Yeah, there is a release coming. Um, I can't give a lot of details about it, but it's a complete release and it's a full package and videos photos everything we've got everything done already the whole thing pretty much everything done yeah very cool i'm really excited well i mean with that it's like and you saw that i tweeted out i was like hey why don't y'all ask some questions for katie and i think the one that came most was like hey when are you getting on the road again which i 
I, I'm curious for myself as well, but are there any well, plans like for you to point, do that? It's been so long. Right. Are you, well, is that like why you haven't done it? Like, do you almost feel like if you were to go out, like maybe people wouldn't necessarily remember you and it would just almost be like this thing where you, I don't know, get discouraged because of that? Or, I mean, do you, no. do you just not like touring? I mean, cause that, that, I mean, you've been through some shit. I'm sure you're very, I mean, I see that you're very close with your mother, your family, you know, touring just isn't necessarily for everybody, right? Well, I actually am made for touring because I can't. I, it sucks because I like I'm finding it hard to get attached to anyone in a real way anymore mm-hmm. which is like I guess really bad a little bit um, a little bit <laughs> because I think it's just <laughs> I think it's just I'm kind of done with everyone like I just like I don't know I just feel like I, it may be because I lived in LA this year and it's just the worst place to live if you have a heart so it's like it, it can just break your spirit and I just feel like, I've met so many fake people in the last five years. I immediately meet people, and I'm just discouraged by everything about them. I'm just like, oh, God, your shoes and your face are so stupid. I don't even want to hear anything you have to say. <laughs> and so I'm a little bit jaded. But at the same time, like, nothing makes me happier than touring because I have always been one of those artists, and I hope that people see this, that knows where my bread and butter come from. Like, I know without those people buying my songs and – listening to my ridiculousness online and like listening to my songs, I know that without them, I am just an unemployed basic white girl. And <laughs> I just, I always want to show my gratitude for that because no matter how big a platform I have to sing to, I'll always sing. That's the thing for me. Is I don't care if I'm singing in my shower alone. Like this is truly, it would never discourage me to play to one person or a zillion people. It's no different to me. It's like someone out there is appreciating my music and it's helping them Mm -hmm. and they're not just there to watch me shake my ass because it's never about that for me i'm always telling funny stories on stage and i'm like i'm making them feel like we're friends and and i really want to be friends with everyone who does connect to my music because we we're not so different you know Uh and it makes me feel better too so no i wouldn't be discouraged and yes i am trying we're actually we've been trying really hard to get me on the road asap and i was going to go to this i was going to go do this tour that starts in like a couple days but then it kind of fell through last minute because it was so late getting like trying to get on it but i'm actively you know looking and we're all working on it so hopefully very soon i can get on the road because that's the main goal for us is to get me out there back in front of fans again so are you ever like going out to like karaoke bars or anything like that just to perform or are you you know uh, no no I, nothing not, like that <laughs> well well it's not that i'm like i think i'm too good or anything because but it's just i I don't know. I'm not very, um, I'm not like one of those, uh, kind of people, I guess. I don't, I, I, I'm kind of nervous in front of, uh, people right. who know me. That's, which is weird. I'm one of those people that like, you put me in front of a million strangers, like I'll say the dumbest stuff I've ever said in my life and everyone will laugh at me and I'll laugh too. But you put me in front of like my mom and one of her friends and I'll like crumble. <laughs> I just, I just asked because it's been, like you said, so long, like three years almost or something since your last show. Yeah. I don't know. And yeah. I, I would just imagine just, especially since you said that you're built for the road and things that you like miss it so much or something. But I mean, maybe you're getting your fix from just the Instagram videos of you singing that, that you're posting and everything like that, which I don't know. Those are always entertaining, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know. It did nothing, nothing beats like seeing someone singing your song in the audience. I would say, I, I would never say that making a 15 second Instagram video in my garage is anything close to that. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, but like, I, yeah, I'm so bored. I want to, I want to meet fans and touch them again and not inappropriately, but just hug them. I, I want to go back to like when you started out your first tour, was it the bamboozle road show? Yeah. And so how do you get on a, on a show like that? Were you like one of those like discovered talents or something like that? Like where, where you would hear stories like, I think like Taylor Swift or like even Haley Williams had that kind of thing where like a label saw them and then almost like built something with them. Was that you or did it come like a different way? No, it definitely came like that. I, um, I made the, um, what was that EP called? A month of Sundays. Yeah. <laughs> I made that EP <laughs> and with like a buddy from college. And then I just like, threw it on MySpace and 
literally like a week or two later, I had all these people messaging me on my space that said they were from major labels. And I was like, yeah, right. And all my family's like, no, like they're, that's someone like just, you know, messing with you and you're going to, they're going to fly you to New York and rape and kill you. And it's going to be the last time we ever saw you. And nobody believed me. Like literally nobody in my life believed that I was really going to New York. And I was like, you know what? If I die, at least I died like trying. Like if I'm going. I'm going to New York. I don't care. I'm letting this person buy me a ticket. I don't. I really don't care. Uh-huh. And um, so I went to New York, and it ended up being real. And then I, they all discovered me. Um, and then like every major label was in a bidding war, and I was flying out to New York every week, uh, meeting with another label, showcasing for them, and they all wa- were you know wanting to find me. And I was like, Are you all like sure? Because I didn't ever do it to be a singer. I just wanted to be a writer. And so I had to sing my own songs. I didn't want to. And I I was like, are y'all, they're like, Oh my gosh, you're such a star. And I was like, are y'all sure? Like, (laughs) like I literally stuck. Like, what are you talking about? I'm not even a singer. Like I just, this is crazy. And I, they had to convince me that I was like the artist and not like the writer. And so I was like, all right, whatever, you know, screw it. Let's do this. Yeah. I mean, I was going to ask how fucking cool do you feel having, you know, people bidding over you, but you're you're just over here. It was weird. You just want to write, right? You know, you didn't Yeah. I was literally like, oh whatever, you know, you know, y'all put the fake hair on, I'll I'll sing, whatever. <laughs> um so so I just like I just went with it. I was you know, I was twenty and I was like, Who cares? Like, let's do this. Like I just wanted to do anything. I was ready to just not live out of my car anymore. I just wanted to be something and do something about it, just move forward in any way. My brother had just died, and I was just like, Brother Casey. Um, and I was just like, trying to do anything to move forward and not, not you know, regret never taking a chance or not just get some stupid nine-to-five job and live in Oklahoma the rest of my life. But I wanted to say that I tried. And so I was like, what better way than this time to a major label? Let's do it. <laughs> like, right. This is a life story. Let's, let's make some stories. And so I, mean- I did it, and... I'm sorry, go on. Go ahead. Oh, no, I just say, I, I, I find, I chose RCA, and it was such a great fit for me. I loved my A&R. Um, it was a girl, her name's Rainey, and she's still, to this day, my best friend on the planet. And she and I were just, we just, two, two peas in a pod, and she immediately got me on the Bamboozle. It was like, I signed the papers, and a week later, went on the Bamboozle Award Show. She just always gotten the best opportunities for me and fought for me and through to the very end with RCA she was just such I mean you, I can't even tell you she's like a sister it's crazy so then where did the problems come with RCA in terms of like releasing your music or trying to mold you into something that you weren't I mean you're talking you love this chick or this girl and all of a sudden it's you know like... I really it's not it's not the, my team on RCA it wasn't my team at all everyone fought for me um, I actually people always want, want me to give dirt and like say bad things, but there's, I have, I really have nothing bad to say about it. It just didn't work out. Like, it just didn't work out. And it's all timing. And like, like you said, if you're not already Taylor Swift or Katy Perry or pink or Carrie Underwood, it's hard to get someone in a, ten, a, a you know, a, a fan base or attention. And I really built what I have by myself. Like I, I'm the one who put in the man hours and I'm the one who's, you know, said the dumbest stuff on Twitter and gotten people to follow me and stuff. And it's like, and, you know, I'm the one who got Blake Shelton in my music video. I did all that stuff myself. It wasn't like I had anyone paying anyone to help me. It was really, they wanted me to be that artist. Like the organic Katie Groves, you know, built, you know, very organic fan base, build it on your own, let it organically get bigger. That's the word they use a lot, organic, organic. And I was like, okay, I have fake hair. Nothing about this is organic. <laughs> so I don't know. You know, I really have nothing bad to say. They didn't pressure me to be anyone that I wasn't. That was kind of me like, yeah, let's, you know, Let's do this. And this. Like, I was kind of falling into like the Hollywood scene and I was dumb for right. a couple of years, but, and that's, I mean, I don't regret it because I learned a lot. Um, but yeah, it just, the stars didn't align at all. Nothing ever just worked out with them. Everything, everything just sort of fell flat. And it's all about one thing that Rainey did, did teach me. My A&R is that every single thing about success really nowadays has nothing to do about your, your level of talent it is all about timing every every single thing is about timing because if Katy Perry would have come out with I kissed a girl right now it could have flopped you know you just never know right right well 
Well, I mean, I, I, I hope that the timing right now is right. The new single, Crying Game, is, again, unbelievable. Um, Thank this, you. This new Katie Groves that you're referring to, you know, the real, you know, not the fake hair, not the, you know, forced pop or whatever. It's, it's you know, I, I'm really looking forward to what you have in store, and I'm sure that all of your fans are as well. Um I think that you have a great message to send people. You've dealt with some pretty tough shit in your life. I mean, yeah, <laughs> some some incomprehensible shit to to most people. And you know, instead of sitting around feeling sorry for yourself or or something like that, you're getting out there and you're kind of empowering others. And that's a very yeah. very great genuine thing to do. Um, and again, I I mean, I really really wish you all of the success in the world. I'm a, I'm a huge oh, fan. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, thank you. And, you know, it, it's just, it, it's one of those things if, I, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm just, you know, telling you. I'm, I'm, no, it, I I'm, like I'm it. I'm fangirl. Listen, I'm fangirling right now, Katie Groves. Can you, can you, can you allow me a few <laughs> minutes going. to fangirl? <laughs> I'm putting my legs up. I'm ready. I'm just, I'm just listening. Yeah, and, you know, it, it's, I don't know. I don't know. What, what, well, what? one thing about the thing about everything that's happened to me is I, I, I genuinely get uncomfortable when people feel sorry for me. I just, nothing feels worse to me than someone feeling sorry for me because everyone has a soft story. Every single person on this planet has something devastating that's happened to them. And who am I to think that think everything's relative? I mean, yeah, really in my opinion, I mean, in my opinion, some terrible things have happened, but it's just like, the most boring thing to me is wasting time. It's, why would I waste time crying? That, that makes no sense to me. But when I can write a song like Crying Game and maybe put it out there and someone can someone can heal from it. it can, someone can relate to it. And that's what heals me, is other people being like, you're not alone. Because I'm like, oh my God, thank you. <laughs> like, it makes me feel so much better because I'm not like the only person who feels depressed some days. Or, and I want to be super genuine with everyone now that's my main goal is just to not lie anymore like I don't want to lie about who I am at all like I rarely wear makeup anymore I don't have fake hair I don't wear high heels and that's not to make a point that's not that's not to make a point at all that's because I genuinely don't care if people think I'm pretty anymore because I feel good about myself and that's a point that I I want so many girls get to get to and I don't want girls to feel like and I feel like kind of that for a while for putting on that whole like you know fake eyelashes always done up always you know the fake hair it's just I didn't want girls to feel inferior that that's what they needed to do to be pretty Mm -hmm. and I'm I'm the first one to be like online like yeah I have you know fake boobs whatever like I got them because I I waited till I was 25 Mm -hmm. or 24 to get them you know it's like I thought about it for 10 years before getting them. Like, I'm not saying that I think you should get big boobs, but I'm saying, like, this is something I did for me, but I don't think that boobs make me. And that I think everyone's pretty. And I'm the first to admit, like, yeah, that's probably stupid that I did that. But whatever. I, I still don't regret it. I, so, think, I think more so than anything, and I, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, I think more so than anything you're just saying, do what makes you comfortable, right? Yeah, yeah. And never, like never change yourself for a boy or your stupid friends. Like, because chances are, I mean, I hate to burst your bubble, the people you're friends with in high school are probably not going to be your friends. You're like <laughs> 32, unless you live in a small town and you're like bored, but it's just, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just, I want right. to teach these kids to be realistic. Like, it's and, not the end all be all when you're 17 years old and you're going to find more in life. I promise you. Right. And, and again, I think that that's a great message to have. I think that, I don't know. I think you're doing a great job at doing it, and and a lot of people again relating through you, and you just I don't know. I I I really really want to watch you just have a rocket strapped to your back and just take the fuck off. You know? It, <laughs> oh my gosh! That'd it's be awesome. It's about time, right? And and so, with that said, well, I would say I I I would say I would never say I deserve anything, but I would say that I'm due for some good news. Well, I I would say that you deserve something, and I I, I mean not that my opinion matters, but you know to oh the, to I the, think you should call God right now because li- listen to to those speaking straight to big guns upstairs right, right now. Well, to to everybody listening, you fucking listen to me here, Katie Groves. <laughs> you just you go out there and listen. I mean, 
you got me. I'm I'm singing songs about being a girl, and I'm <laughs> clearly not such. And, and I'm like I'm like listening to it, you know. And <laughs> it's one of those things. Like I'm driving around with my girlfriend, and if I have it on, like I'm not a, I'm not ashamed to to admit that I'm the one who put on Katie Groves. Like are you kidding? Me? <laughs> like are you kidding? Good. Me? I want guys. I want guys to feel good about listening to me. Right. And, and, and again, it it goes along with the fact that like you do you are doing a lot to to get to reach your fans and, and to send positive messages. And that's another thing that I will just always support. Like if you put out like a shitty song tomorrow, which I don't think you do, I think I'd still support you yeah. because you're like fun. You're funny on Twitter and you fucking make people feel good. You know what I mean? Like you're a real know. person. Yeah. Right, I mean, right. I feel I've always said like, I will always be gettable to you guys because I don't, I don't like an artist unless I feel like I, I want to be their best friend so bad. Like I've been obsessed with Alanis Morissette since I was five years old. Mm -hmm. And it's because I genuinely want to just like cry with her. Like I just want to sit with her and cry and scream and then like break someone. Uh And like, I just, I feel so connected to her in this like angsty way that I feel like so many girls nowadays are connected to Taylor Swift. Like she's my Taylor Swift. Right. And so it just I want to be that for like other people. I just want to be their, right. you know, their person that they want to be friends with and like tell all their stories to like because they think I'll get it, you know. Uh huh. And yeah. honestly, I feel like I can listen to them because no matter what they've seen, I've seen worse. So I feel like they're I'm not afraid of them. They're I'm, they're not they're not afraid to tell me anything because I've heard some of the scariest things from some of those kids in my direct messages, and I'm just like, holy crap. Like, these kids are going through some real-life shit, and I just want to be there for every one of them. Mm-hmm. Very nice of you. Very selfless. And, hey. Wow. I mean, if uh, and in the meantime, when, when you're not, you know, fucking changing lives for people, if you could, you know, you give Taco Bell some shout-outs sometimes. You're always talking about Hummer. pizza. That's always good, right? Oh my gosh, I love pizza and talk about them so much. But I actually <laughs> rarely eat either of them. I just talk about them a lot. I, yeah. It's not that I'm afraid to eat either of them. I just never like, hey, let's go get pizza because I'm so lazy that I don't, like, I want instant gratification. Like, I want to reach in the fridge and eat. I don't want to, like, wait for yeah. an hour for pizza. Right. It's because I'm, liter- I'm literally lazy and I don't want to drive to Taco Bell. <laughs> well, Katie, I think we've had a good conversation. I think we, <laughs> we, 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 too. we, we've touched on a lot of ground. Is there anything? Yeah, I feel like we're actually friends now. Right, and th- I mean that's a good thing. Um, yeah. Any any anybody being friendly to the website always helps, and you've always been very kind to us, and I really appreciate that. Well, um, y'all have been really great to me too, so thank you guys. Absolutely. Is there anything that you think that you want to add or to say to anybody? We we plug the single like crazy, so I, I'll spare you <laughs> that. Go listen to Crying Game. Damn it! It's the sh- it's the <laughs> shit. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please go listen to Crying Game, you guys, because if anything, I want you to see that. Um, don't don't feel sorry for me as listening to it, but l- apply it to your own life. I don't care if it's the dumbest thing, crying over a guy or crying over losing your contact in the bathroom sink. Everyone has a day where they cry, and everyone has, like I said earlier, a sob story. So think of yours and just kind of try to appreciate life. If I can ask one thing of you, just please appreciate life. I've I've lost uh, two brothers at this point, and the one thing that I've gotten out of that um, is that you really have to appreciate every single day because every second that you're inhaling and exhaling is a gift. So just please realize that. And I'll try to be here for you along the ride if you're here for me. Let's, we can do everything together. And before we go, Katie, I just thought I'd bring up, back when Where the Shit came out, you know how we have this mm-hmm. whole like sassy music news gimmick and and it's the the whole thing where we're you know fucking obnoxious and all that we well with mm-hmm. it with it came this kind of ego mindset and my buddy j webb and i back when he was posting on the site we would pull up to every show whenever we would interview mm-hmm. a band and we <laughs> we would play we're the shit very very loudly in his car and <laughs> that was kind of like our thing when we went to go interview bands is <laughs> oh my god that that no, was we're, like, we're definitely best friends now. Yeah, that that was that was definitely our thing. Our thing was like not wearing socks and listening to Katie Groves <laughs> for whatever reason. The first time we interviewed, in in it was we. I, I totally backed this. Well, listen, you were you were like the second. I I think you were the second show that that I covered with Pop. Yeah, I remember being like you guys were like we literally just started. Right, like, and for whatever reason, J Web and I didn't have socks on that day. 
and, and which is completely unrelated to everything but but the but the the inside joke i guess that that came from that was like no socks let's listen to where the shit and that that was puff that that was the foundation of puff fresh so i want to thank you for always being a part of, of i'm the founder of, i'm of, the founder of, of puff, puff fresh history vibe. i will take credit <laughs> katie it was great talking to you i i hope we can do it again soon crying game out now go listen to it Thank y'all so much. Yep. I love you. Thanks for interviewing me. <laughs> Thank you. I think I'm okay. So there's the Katie interview. Um, when I listened back to it, I couldn't help but realize that it was pretty much me fanboying for like a half hour. But that's okay because it's very rare that I actually get to interview artists that I'm a fan of. And I am a fan of Katie because she's very talented, very nice person, and especially because her new single, Crying Game, is amazing. And you can listen to that on YouTube and Spotify. Um, If you want to stick around for the rest of this, it's just going to be me plugging myself. And if you're into that kind of thing, then hey. But if you're not, just exit out. Um, Follow at PuffFresh on Twitter to stay updated with music news. Subscribe to the PuffFresh podcast on iTunes because you have put the podcast app on your phone and you have nothing else to do with it. Uh... Subscribe to Puff Fresh on YouTube because you do that. People, they have YouTube it exists. And SoundCloud, I'm not even going to try it because I'm not releasing a cool rap mix taping. You have absolutely no reason then to subscribe to me on SoundCloud. But yeah, that's all the places you can listen to the Puff Fresh podcast. Go back, listen to all of the other episodes. And if you like this podcast, feel free to tweet at Puff Fresh to let me know. And if you did not like this podcast, then fuck you. Why did you listen for over 50 minutes to me talking to Katie Groves if you didn't think that it was at least a little bit good? You wasted your time. You are a fucking idiot. And then tweet tweet me and tell me that you wasted your time so that I can laugh at you for me being the reason that you wasted almost an hour of your life. Um, but especially, though, you should... Uh, tweet me compliments because it's very rare that anybody ever says anything nice about me and even if you're lying then it's a little little white lie that'll probably make my day a lot better um yeah thank you again katie groves for letting me interview you you're great you're and yeah that's the podcast the fourth podcast i did it i made it through four whole podcasts all by myself can you imagine that and now the intro music or the outro music whatever you want to call it's about to cut me off and it's gonna be it The Puff Fresh Podcast, Puff Fresh Podcast, Puff Fresh Podcast!